Hello and welcome to the Global Volunteer Conference 2011 in Budapest. Joining me today are Dr. Flavia Pansieri, UNV Executive Coordinator, and Dr. Mukesh Kapila, IFRC Undersecretary General. And I'm Bakuli Robinson and I'm a volunteer. Um, first of all, thank you for joining me today. And I wondered, um, do, do you have children yourselves? Yes, I do. I okay. have a daughter. Okay. And what would you tell your daughter, or what have you told your daughter, to encourage her to become a volunteer? My daughter is 28. If I told anything to my daughter, I could be assured she'd do exactly the opposite. I haven't told her, but I have shown her with the example. Okay, thank you. Dr. Kapila? I have three daughters, also in their 20s, and uh, they all have a very different... Uh, passions and uh, I would uh, in terms of guiding them simply say to follow their passion in terms of their uh, uh, volunteering and I think this is what uh, they are trying to do sometimes uh, uh, kind of uh, in unexpected ways but uh, they are very interested in volunteering. Okay. Thank you. Um, now as you know we're this year celebrating the 10th anniversary of the International Year of Volunteering and you both have um, in common uh, United Nations background. I wondered what, if you remember where you were and what you were doing in the year 2001 when this whole adventure started. Well, in the year 2001, I was actually in New York. Uh, I was in New York on 9-11. And it was, of course, a shocking moment for all. It was also a very remarkable moment on how the city came together. Uh, to support those who had lost someone. It, it was for us a very important moment for recognizing also the value of volunteering because all of us in the United Nations also got engaged. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I was in London at my desk in the Department for International Development where I was the head of humanitarian affairs watching events in New York un unfolding and little was I to know that in a few months time I would be decanted out of my nice office and uh, put in Kabul to join the, the UN as a special advisor to the mission there that went in uh, to help Afghanistan. Okay, thank you. Now you've both um, participated in various events of this conference. Um, do you feel there was, is there a special moment that you might have seen during this conference at any point that you would remember particularly? There's one moment that I do remember particularly, and that is in, on the first day when a young person, Daniel from Colombia, mentioned very clearly that to volunteer, you have to volunteer your passions, through your passions. And like always in this event, you learn so much from many other people. And at that moment, I realized that that was the way to be really effective as volunteers. Don't go looking for strange thing to do, but engage there where your beliefs are, where your commitment is, because there you can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Uh, I think the whole conference has been very uh, eventful. Uh, the, uh, sort of uh, remember, uh, memorable moments uh, uh, every day. Uh, in my case, I think we've got our 60, 70 national societies from Red Cross, Red Cross societies from all over the world present here, and listening to their individual testimonies about how voluntary, volunteering is saving lives and transforming uh, uh, mindsets, uh, ranging from Haiti to China, from uh, Southern Africa to Eastern Europe, in many, many different areas, whether it's a long-term social development or short-term uh, disaster responses. Those were awfully, uh, I think, inspiring and, uh, and uh, for me, memorable stories. Thank you. So from this conference, uh, a declaration will be um, uh, produced. Um, what do you feel is the most single important and urgent aspect that should be um, amended into the, in included into the, the declaration? There are many aspects uh, that are important. To me, what is really essential is to recognize that at this historical point in time, when we are facing so many challenges worldwide, we are still leaving an incredible resource partly untapped and often unrecognized. And that is the voluntary engagement of people and what they can contribute to peace, to development, to humanitarian response. 
um, what the declaration is trying to do is to really increase the intentionality in supporting those expressions which are so much part of our human nature and, and providing, facilitating, enabling environments for them to be able to express themselves and contribute what they can. Thank you. I, I agree with Flavia, and that is why uh, the International Federation Red Cross Red Crescent, which is the world's largest uh, voluntary network, and, and United Nations uh, volunteers, an expression of uh, the, the governments of the world coming together, why we are together doing this, because it brings us together from all levels, whether it's a community or at the global level. For me, uh, I think uh, only in the last few days I uh, heard, uh, heard about uh, several of our volunteers, say one, one uh, Red Cross volunteer in South Sudan, in the new country of South Sudan, and uh, one uh, Red Crescent volunteer in Syria. They lost their lives while carrying on their humanitarian duties. And this happens every year. Every year, uh, volunteers working for many organizations uh, pay the ultimate sacrifice. So for me, one of the most important things is... Uh, for the world to recognize the sacred duty it has in terms of protecting volunteers, uh, wherever they might be, at the front lines and behind the scenes. Okay, thank you. So you both are um, global volunteer leaders. Um, do you believe there is a specific model to build on or to, to, to be transformed to enable global and local volunteers to work better or more efficiently? One of the aspects that we recognize in this conference and elsewhere is that there is not and perhaps there should not be one specific model because volunteering is an expression of, of our common humanity. It's clearly very much determined by the cultures and the context where we operate. It is, however, found everywhere. The important thing is, therefore, to recognize the commonality, but to support its expression in a way that is responding to the specific context. We find volunteering expressed through the international young people who go from one country to another, but we also find it expressed in every traditional society where systems of self-help, mutual uh, cooperations, um, a find expression. So I believe that an important role that we have is in recognizing that the principles, the values are common. The ways these values are expressed is and has to be adapted to the specific local context. Thank you. I think uh, uh, I agree with Flavia. Uh, diversity and allowing that diversity to flourish is very important a part of it. If we over-regulate volunteering, then we will, we will snuff out the spirit that, that yeah. inspires it. Uh, at, at the same time, uh, there has be, it ha the context of respect is very important, so that uh, volunteers are respected within their communities, and uh, when international volunteers, volunteers from other countries go into a country, they do it in a spirit that supports and nurtures local volunteering rather than overwhelms it. So uh, uh, the, uh, what's needed in terms of some kind of model is uh, basically recognizing the place of different levels of volunteering and each complementing uh, the other rather than trying to replace it. Okay, thank you. Was there anything else you would like to add about this, either the, your impression of the conference itself, what you believe can be achieved from here onwards uh, for the future of volunteering? You know, I believe this conference is, is very important because it is bringing together two uh, powerful actors. I recognize the enormous influence that the IFRC can have in, in, in shaping impressions, opinions, and the role equally important that the United Nations can have. But when we come together, the expression of the member states and the expression of civil society, and we jointly advocate for a recognition and a promotion and really support to volunteerism, we really can have a bigger impact. It was really important for us to partner in, in the United Nations Volunteers Program, to partner with IFRC because we recognize it's great outreach and I do hope that it has been equally important for IFRC to partner with us. Thank you. How is 
It certainly has been very, very important and uh, valuable to partner with the UN, and this is only the start. I hope we will do a lot of uh, good, things, uh, good things together. I think in looking forward, we have to recognize, uh, we're, uh, and it's almost uh, truism to say that we live in a fast-changing world. And in that, in that fast-changing world, uh, it's important that uh, styles and approaches to volunteering continue to keep pace so that uh, uh, the current and future generations are as attracted to volunteering as, uh, as, as previous ones. What that means is that, uh, that uh, we also, the volunteers and volunteering has to influence also future development paradigms. Uh, and as we approach 2015 and we look at the next generation of uh, development goals and that debate will happen, uh, volunteers and volunteering organizations should be at the very, very uh, heart of it. I think someone said at the conference that volunteer, uh, volunteering was an MDG, meaning a missing development goal. Yeah. And uh, we, have a, we have the space now to try and uh, fill, uh, 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 you know, correct that uh, gap. Okay, thank you very much for your time to both of you. This is Bakri Robinson from the Global Volunteer Conference in Budapest with Dr. Flavia Pantieri, UNV Executive Coordinator, and Dr. Mukesh Kapila, IFRC Under Secretary General. Thank you. <laughs>